What is up, Squared Nation? Welcome back to No Counters, No Combos. And today, we are back in the battle chamber. We have David on the right playing Frieza Prison and Joe on the left playing Pan. Now, David's going to start off by charging a red energy, activating his leader skill, which allows him to look at the top five cards for a red extra card and add it to his hand. Um, <clears throat> David's been playing Frieza Prison for quite some time now, a few weeks at least, maybe a month or so. And I've got to say, it's pretty interesting seeing how the deck operates and just how much advantage you could possibly build up. So with that being said, David is going to pass his turn over to Joe. Joe is going to charge a Digging Deep Vegeta, giving him his first red energy, and swing leader into leader, 10k to 10k. Let's see if David decides to counter. I think he's deciding whether he's going to counter the attack or not. But no, he's just going to take the damage and go down to 7 life. Joe is going to pass turn. David's going to draw for turn, and let's see what he decides to do here with turn two. The interesting thing about um, Freeze of Prison is you're not really doing too much early game. Uh, the leader has a permanent effect where you cannot include battle cards that cost uh, less than four in the deck. So you're not really doing anything early game. You're not really building up board presence. You're not really, you know, putting um, battle cards on board for your opponent to swing at. So you're kind of playing really passively. But the good thing about the leader is that you can generate passive advantage, which is very, very, um, very, very strong in the Dragon Ball Super card game. So as you can see, David is just going to charge, um, look at the top five for an extra card, and pass. That's kind of what you want to do in the first couple turns of, the, of this deck here, just to make sure that you have all your pieces for setup. Joe is going to charge his second red energy. He looks like he's about to tap one for a play here. Let's see what he decides to do. Uh, he is playing Pan. Pan is one of those um, constant, um, consistent decks. Uh, it did suffer a little bit in the Super Shenron format, but now with the new ban list um, moving forward on June 1st and the new cards coming out in the anniversary set, it's going to be interesting to see how Pan interacts with the new cards. So Joe is going to swing leader to leader 10k. No counters from David. Joe is going to combo the Supreme Kai, giving it double strike to Pan. So she's sitting at 20k double strike to leader. Let's see if David decides to combo out of this attack here. I think Joe is no longer going to combo, so he's going to play a Cabo's Awaken him, giving him 16. Then he's going to tap one to play uh, Loyal Kikono, which gives him another 10k combo, and then gets an extra card from the drop area to the hand. Now, that's a very, very efficient line of play. Because Kaba's Awakening is an extra card, it does not stay in the combo area. So you can go ahead and grab it back with Loyal Kikono. So he's he essentially survived a 20k double strike by just using one card, which is bananas. So with that, Joe's going to pass to David. He's going to charge his third energy and look at top five and add Live to Fight Another Day. Now, Live to Fight Another Day is the bread and butter of the Frieza Prison deck. It is a three energy cost extra card uh, that allows you to draw a card when you play it. And then it has a lingering effect where your opponent cannot play battle cards with 20k power or less unless they choose to discard three cards as an additional cost. The only caveat to that card is that you and your opponent have to have three energy. So obviously it's not going to be something that he does right away. But now if Joe decides to charge his third energy, which he's going to, Lift to Fight becomes active on David's turn. So now is when you're going to start to see the real prison that is Frieza. Um, just kind of denying your opponent the opportunity to play the game. Joe is going to tap one to play Intensifying Power Trunks, which is going to gain 5k off of his leader. He is now going to tap two reds to evolve chain attack on top of it. Uh, he doesn't get to proc the pan auto on the front side because he did play intensifying power first. So chain attack trunks is now sitting at 25k. He's going to chain attack in a tiny rival sun goten. So tiny rival sun goten is really interesting. Um, it was introduced to us in the world martial arts tournament set. It's a 15k barrier three drop. And when tiny... Tiny Rivals Trunks is on the is on the field. Um, they both gain double strike, and Trunks has a critical stat. So they both become 20k double strikers, Goten having barrier, Trunks having critical. So it's really cute. It's very interesting to see that combination being used. Joe is going to attack with his chain attack, and David is going to respond with an after image. Um, so he survives that attack there. 
Joe still has his leader swing, and he does have tiny rivals, but because you're going for that combo with the trunks, you really don't want to put Goten at risk. So with that, he's just going to pass over to David. And now David's going to go into turn four here, charging his fourth red energy. And then you guys will see exactly how not fun it is to play against Live to Fight Another Day. So he's going to charge the Cobbles Awakening, giving him four reds. He's going to activate his leader skill to look at top five for a red extra, ca extra card, adding it to his hand. Let's see if he has a target here. Sometimes you do whiff. Uh, most of the time you won't, but sometimes you do. So let's see. He does whiff in this instance, which doesn't happen very often uh, because you're playing a lot of extra cards. But, you know, when you're doing some type of random strategy like that, there is always a chance for it to backfire. So he doesn't get to add anything off of that. And now let's see if he decides to... I mean, the play here for David would be to... Um, go ahead and activate Lift to Fight into the day because not only will it replace itself, but it will prevent a Joe from essentially doing anything because Pan doesn't really play that many big bombs. Most of their cards that you play in Pan are 25k or less anyway, so Lift to Fight another day just becomes very, very effective against that type of strategy. Um, so he is going to Lift to Fight, and then he's going to tap the remaining red energy to Transcendent Strike away the Chain Attack Trunks. Transcendent Strike is a new card that was introduced to us in set 6. For one red energy, you can choose a, a, a battle card on your opponent's side of the board with 20k power or less and destroy it. So the reason you hit that Chain Attack is because you don't want Joe to now, for two energy, evolve another Chain Attack on top of it and you know just kind of go crazy there with all the pluses. Now, if Joe decides to play anything that's 20k or less, he will have the added effect of discarding three cards from his hand as an additional cost to play that card. That is the that is essentially the beauty of Lift to Fight Another Day. It essentially slows your opponent down from playing an early game, and it stalls you out enough to get to your later game so you can play your bigger threats. Because when you're playing um, Freeze, of, uh, Freeze of Prison, um, the main two attack or the main the main threats in the deck would obviously be the Secret Rare, Frieza, and then the A drop super rare and the uh seven drop freeze of the finisher rare card those 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 are just like the big bombs that you're playing in the deck uh because you want to stall so you get to that point and then it makes it uh essentially better for you to ensure a victory when you're playing the um the bigger freezes so joe is really in a tough spot right now because he has a lot of energy like five energy in pan is or four, four or five energy in pan is a lot you know, because there's so many plays that you can make, but, you know, having to discard three cards is, is kind of rough. So it's kind of one of those things where you have to decide the lesser of two evils. And sometimes it, it doesn't make sense for you to discard your hand, especially early. You know, David is really not attacking. You know, he's really not swinging at Joe because he doesn't want to continue giving him advantage. So Joe's in a tough spot um, right now because of that simple fact not to mention frieza just being a counter heavy deck you know with just all the extra cards i mean you're talking about if you, if you look at all of the red extra cards that are available to us in the game that are actually that are actual counters and have counter timing you have uh after image technique you have is that all you've got uh, you have Paralysis Technique, which can also be played by the uh, the Red Frieza le leader there. So that alone is just 12 negates, essentially, to have. And then not to mention, you have Live to Fight Another Day, which essentially stops your opponent from playing battle cards, which is how they would put themselves in a prime position to extend their plays and put damage on board. Then you have free combo cards like Kaba's Awakening. And not to mention, you have New Model Scouter. New Model Scouter is the one-drop extra card. Uh, that gets to look at the top seven for two um, red Frieza army cards and put them into your hand. So you can add your finishers, you can add your combo cards, not to mention Kikono being able to recycle all of your extra cards. There's just a lot of utility in this deck, and I, I, I honestly am surprised that not a lot of people have experimented with this leader as of yet because of the utility that it has with the extra card. So Joe decides that he's going to go ahead and attack with his leader, and David's just going to combo uh, Cabo's Awakening there to survive that attack. Joe's going to pass to David. He's going to draw for turn here. Let's see. Obviously, you're going to charge your fifth energy because the whole point of playing off Freeze of Prison is to get to really high energy totals. So right now, he's sitting at five red energy, 
all in active mode. He's going to activate his leader skill for top five for a red extra. And he adds, is that all you've got? Which now we know that he has at least two of them in his hand because he's added one earlier in the game. So uh, already, you know, if you're, if you're calculating what cards your opponent has available f to play, you're definitely putting that into consideration. So David's going to go ahead and turn his leader sideways to swing at the pan. Combo a loyal Kikono to add back. Live to fight another day, making Frieza a 10k swing. And now he has his follow-up play with Live to Fight, which is going to lock Joe out from playing essentially anything. So Live to Fight comes down for three. He's going to draw a card, and boom, the lingering effect is now static. And that's it. You just pass. I mean, that's, that's the whole point of this Frieza deck is to just deny, deny, deny until you're ready to play your big hitter and then watch your opponent just kind of figure out a way to maneuver around it um the the seven drop freeze of the finisher uh is a really good card it's a 25k double strike its effect is if you have five extra card five or more extra cards in the drop you can reduce his um cost by one if you have 10 or more you can reduce it by an additional one so he essentially comes out for five energy He's a double striker with 25k. When you play that battle card, you choose all cards on the field that are 25k or less, ignoring barrier, and KO them or send them to the drop. I'm not sure if I'm pretty sure it's KO. So he gets around barrier. He kills everything on the board that's 25k or less. You can swing for 25k double strike, and then for free, you can EX evolve the eight drop Frieza on top of him, restand him, discard three cards, and now you have a 30k critical striker. That if your opponent decides to play a battle card that's 35k or less, they have to crit themselves by 4 life. So they take 4 of their life and put it in the drop area. Which essentially is crazy. If you think about it, that card is nuts all on its own. Just critting your opponent by 4 life or trying to make an, a, an attempt to play an offensive card. It does have the drawback that it affects you as well, being the offensive player or being the Frieza player. But if you're sitting on, if you're controlling with that... In combination with live to fight your essentially your opponent essentially cannot do anything so just explaining that to you guys sounds super oppressive so joe literally does nothing for his turn he, he just charges again you and passes there's nothing he can do because of live to fight another day so david's gonna draw and charge he's at six red energy right now which is a lot of red energy it's a lot of energy period we're so used to a format in Dragon Ball where we're, we're, we're ending games at 3 or 4. And the fact that Frieza's playing 6 energies right now, still sitting at 7 life, is kind of ridiculous. So he scries top 5 for uh, Live to Fight Another Day. Which is um, obviously coming down right now for 3 and replacing itself, which is huge. But then on top of that, now as you get later and later into the game, Live to Fight just accrues more value because you have more energy to do more plays so it's it's just to me it's just like it's one of those things where it's like it's not fun to play against but i do really respect david for thinking outside the box and building something that he really enjoys to play while also thinking you know outside of the box and playing something off the cuff like i really was happy you know when he first decided to build this deck and i'm really happy that he's continued to play it and has has, has had success with the deck so you know shout out to you david mad respect uh, for, for, you know, being an innovator. Um, so let's, let's catch up here. David swung leader to leader. Joe comboed out and then he passes. Joe draws. He's charging uh, champion pack Vegeta. So he's sitting at six energy. I don't think he has to continue to charge further after this point. Um, because six energy is a lot. And at that point you're kind of, you know, you're kind of pigeonholing yourself because you're going to keep throwing cards in your energy and then not be able to use the cards in your hand because you're always nagging yourself a resource. So I would just kind of sit at six, but that's just my opinion. Um, Live to Fight is active, so he does have a, a hard decision here. Looks like he's going to tap three to play uh, Fearless Pan, which gives everybody plus 5k and double strike, and he does discard the three cards. Crazy. I mean, that's just so nuts. Everybody does have 5k double, so... He will be able to put some pressure in here. However, if he chooses to awaken his pan, he is going to lose a double strike. So he draws off a of Fearless for Pan's auto, making her 20k. He does decide to awaken here to untap two energy, which is a little questionable. But, you know, if he's trying to make an extension of play here, I can understand why. 
I mean, Pan, the leader, still gains a 5k boost. It just loses a double strike. So she is a 20k right now this turn. And you still do have Goten being a 20k double strike. So he is going to swing 20k into leader, auto draw. Let's see if David decides to counter the effect. Uh, the good thing about Joe's board is that it has barrier. So, you know, after image technique and is that all you've got don't really affect Joe's board because they choose. So David is going to after image that leader swing. And then Joe is going to choose not to combo up. Swinging go 10, 20k double strike into leader 10k. Let's see if David decides to counter this attack. Uh, if he does decide to counter this attack, uh, I would not um, swing with the pan. Because it's good to have a blocker. But he does take the damage. So he goes down to 5. And then Joe's just going to pass. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't risk losing the pan blocker because... It's just a really good card. It has barrier as well. So David is going to draw a charge. He's at 7 energy. He's going to activate leader skill. Top 5 for a red extra card. Another live to fight another day. This card is just so busted. And it's so easy for you to get it. It's just like one of those things where it's like, man, that's just so rough. Um, Being able to do that to your opponent every turn with consistency. Oh, man. It's just... It's just it's just rough. Like I've played against him. I've played against David and this deck I think twice, once or twice. And just just having to play around lift to fight um is just is just so uncomfortable. Cards just make you uncomfortable and it's just one of those rough situations, but um it, you know, it is restricted to that leader. It's it's you know the Frieza does suffer to early aggression. Um, so we're, we're going to see. I, I want to see if it has a spot in the meta. Um, his follow-up play to that is New Model Scouter, which searches top seven for uh, two Frieza army red cards. So he's going to add the Kikono and Frieza the Finisher to his hand, uh, which are good adds, obviously. Anything that scries you X for, for to add cards to your hand is amazing. For only one energy, too, is just kind of nuts. Uh, he is sitting at 5 life right now, so he's still not in Awakening range, which is fine. Uh, Frieza is a draw 2 leader. It's not an untapped 2 leader. So you're, you can awaken kind of whenever. There's really no point for you to awaken. Um, he does activate another Lift to Fight another day here. Uh, the good thing about the Frieza leader itself is on its awaken, um, it does have a built-in leader negate, so you can discard a red card to negate once per turn. And then it also has activ activate main to draw a card. So you don't essentially have to swing to draw. So it does gain um, passive advantage, which is huge. Passive advantage is huge because you you gain advantage while denying your opponent advantage, which is huge. So he's going to swing leader to um, to Goten, combo up, and Joe's not going to save it and then pass. Joe draws. Let's see if he decides to charge more. He'd be at 7 energy now if he charges. Um, considering all things considering that's a lot of energy to do nothing with which is insane he does have his leader awaken however so he will kind of start gaining more advantage and he does have a barrier blocker on the board but for the most part there's not much you could do live to fight is still active so he'd have to play a bomb that's 25k or higher just to get around that uh he doesn't charge swing leader to leader 15k to 10k auto draw let's see if david decides to counter this attack he does. It looks like he has two red energy open, so he does have enough energy for two negates. So he's going to, is that all you've got, and negate the attack. And now it's back to Joe here. Um, Live to Fight is active, so he'd have to pitch three cards to hard cast a battle card that's 20k or less. So let's see if he decides to do it. Um, I guess they're just verifying what the 8-drop freezer does. Again, the 8-drop freeze is just busted. Being able to pigeonhole your opponent and kind of handcuff them against you know playing essentially anything because there's not a lot of cards in this game that are higher than than 35k um that you could just easily play so that's rough i mean frieza does suffer to removal so if you have removal spells you can do that but there's not a lot of removal spells that are extra cards that don't have battle form or battle card forms obviously you think um banisher foo is a good target, but it's it's less than 35k, so you'd have to crit yourself for life to play it. So it is kind of interesting. Um, 
you know, to see how that goes. I mean, Broly, you think of Broly automatically because it has the effect of being able to pop battle cards with an activate battle skill, which is great. So Broly does become essentially a tougher matchup for this deck. And then, of course, Janemba is just tough because if you mill off all your pieces, you essentially lose. So I don't really see, outside of those two decks, Frieza having an issue with a lot of decks because even skillless, they kind of go wide instead of tall. So you can always just, is that all you've got them? And negate multiple attacks per turn. So it's going to be interesting to see if this deck actually does have a place in the meta. I think it can in the right, in the right hands and for, with the right pilot. I think this deck could do a lot and make some serious noise. So let's see what Joe decides to do here. It looks like he's going to attempt to hard cast a battle card, but then again, he, you do have that the minus three, like that neg three is so huge, especially because Dragon Ball is a resource management game. So. It might just be one of those situations where you just kind of sit on your barrier blocker. There really is not much else you can do. You don't want to put yourself in an uncomfortable hand total because you don't want to... I mean, Frieza's big turn is coming. You know, the, He's at 7 energy. He's going to be at 8 energy. So you kind of want to be able to defend as much as you possibly can. So it's interesting, that dichotomy of should I go in or should I wait? But it's like you're, you're, you're playing against the clock because in the early game... The small window that you have against Frieza Prison is the early game turns one to four. And then after that, it just becomes a grind fest moving forward. So it's really interesting to see a pure control deck in Dragon Ball. Most decks are mid rangey or aggressive, but it's nice to see a pure control deck, which is essentially what Frieza Prison really is. So Joe is going to make the attempt to tap an energy here. He's still debating on what he wants to do, but he decides to just pass. David's going to gather up all of his energy, draw for turn. So he's sitting at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 red energy. Let's see if he charges an 8th. He does. 8 red energy, 5 life unawakened. That is gross. So he's going to activate his leader skill to look at top 5 and hopefully add a red extra card. So he chooses new model scouter. Let's see what else is going on here. Joe has about 5 cards in his hand with a barrier blocker on the board. And let's see what David decides to do. He's going to play new model scouter to look at top seven for two red Frieza battle cards and add them to his hand. Or Frieza army, I should say. Two Frieza army battle cards. So he looks like he whiffs. So, he, so he's going to go back and shuffle. So he still has, looks like one, two, three... Four, five, six, seven active red energy, which is crazy. It's just so insane playing with seven energy. He's going to swing with leader, combo the loyal Kikona, which adds the extra card back to his hand. Of course, you're going to add live to fight, and he's just going to say 20k to your leader. Joe is going to take that going down to three, and obviously you activate live to fight with the quickness here <laughs> because that's the card that's literally been saving you this entire game you just play that draw and pass and there's nothing your opponent can do it's just so crazy there's like no way around it like the only way around it would be not to charge three energy but you kind of have to like it's just an uncomfortable situation but um david does pass joe draws for turn here uh he's got a good amount of cards in his hand he has a good amount of energy Live to Fight is active, so he'll have to pitch three cards to play a creature or a battle card. He charges the Crisis Crusher because it's essentially useless right now. So let's see if he decides to make another play here under the lingering condition of Live to Fight. So he's going to tap one to play... Tapping a black. What is he playing? Tapping a black card to play Mercenary Tau. And discarding three... That's very interesting. That's very interesting. Maybe I'm missing something, but I don't see the value in playing Mercenary Tau at this point. Um, he is going to swing with his leader into leader to, to auto-draw. So, it's very interesting to see as to why General Tau was played. Because I don't think Freezer really plays any type of hand destruction. So maybe there, maybe I'm, maybe I'm bad and I'm missing something, but I'm not the one that was playing this game, so I'm not exactly sure as to what the thought process behind that playing that battle card was. But it looks like they're definitely discussing something here as to maybe what the line of play was. 
it, it does seem to be a bit questionable at this point. But in, in, in all honesty, in reality, what more could Joe have possibly done? I mean, I would have just rather stayed with the cards in my hand, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm missing something. Uh, it looks like David took the damage, and now Joe is going to just pass. David's going to untap all eight of his energy, draw a card, and now let's see what... Or is he at seven? No, he charges another one, so we're at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine red energy. Let's see if he activates leader skill to scry for top five. Joe is sitting at three life, so he's in triple strike range. Uh, you're at nine red energy. You can hard cast, essentially... Any card in the game right now that that utilizes red energy for casting, um, and it's, you could you could literally hard cast the video game Gogeta promo and have an eight drop thirty five k dual attack triple striker on the board right now and just finish the game because he only has one blocker to worry about. So let's see what he decides to do. He's gonna tap eight red. Oh, so is it gonna have? Oh, there's only one card better than that Gogeta, and that's the secret rare Frieza army. So. For 8 red energy, he hard casts his one ultimate copy of Frieza Army Reborn, looks at his opponent's hand, takes the only counter card out, and gets to kill his entire board, ignoring barrier. And that Frieza is 40k quadruple strike. That is... What a way to end the game. Because literally the game is over. We all saw Joe's hand... He had only one after image technique in there. So literally the game is over, which is wild. Like that's just crazy to me. Um, just hard casting that is just so huge, you know, oh man. But, you know, I, like I said, I do credit David for playing something, you know, off the cuff, off the wall, interesting, something that he wanted to play as opposed to conforming to the meta. So again, if I haven't enough already praised my teammate, Shout out to you, man, for building something really spicy. And I hope you guys enjoyed this battle chamber. Um, the deck profile will be uploaded as well on the channel with David himself, you know, going card for card, card for card and, and describing everything. So we hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section down below if there's any changes that you would make or if it's something that you want to try out for yourself. So without, with that being said, we're going to get on out of here. Thank you guys again so much for watching. And